Hi there. It is Wednesday afternoon. Time for Bead Smith's Facebook Live with me, Leslie Rogowski. How's everybody doing? Today we are going to uh, answer some questions about the fabulous Endless Loom. A lot of you have been asking more about how to use it. And so I thought I would take today to review the Endless Loom with Endless Bands, which are stretchy. Check this out. Look how clean that is. Wowee. So the Endless Loom, start from the beginning. From Deb Moffat Hall is a wooden tool that comes in this fabulous embroidered case with all kinds of components and parts for you. How about that? Pretty cool, huh? We have the end bars and we have spacer bars that are nicely labeled to tell you what size bracelet it makes. And there's a few other tools we're not gonna to use today that allow you to put incremental changes in your sizes and uh, use with a different technique. But today, we're going to use the Endless Loom with Endless Bands, which come in black and clear, six, seven, and eight inches. These happen to be assortment packs there are instructions on the packs that tell you how to choose the right size for the bracelet that you want to make. And today I'm going to tell you that for a stretchy bracelet, and this is just the way I work, I find that choosing a size that's a half an inch smaller than your regular size for the bracelet, just a tad stretched when it fits on here is what works the best. And this is so easy. You know, if you have any familiarity with weaving on a loom, stringing the warp, which are the cords or threads that your weaving sits on, is the most challenging part. The magic in the endless loom with the endless bands is that there are no ends to the warps. Ta -da! All you have to do to set up to weave is choose the number of warps that you want to put on your loom. I'm working with uh, seven inch bands for a seven and a half inch bracelet. So it stretches just a tad to put on and my, the bracelet that I'm going to be demoing for you only has two warps. So there's one. There's another. I'm done warping. You don't get any faster than this when it comes to warping a loom. So I'm going to show you how to start weaving. And then I have another piece that's ready to end and come off the loom. Ready to get started? Hi, Steven. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Kathy. You're a fan. I see you every week. Thank you very much. So here's some of the samples that I made before I get into that. This has four warp bands. You can see them because I have more than one bead in between. That's kind of a little different technique. This just has a band between every bead. Now, the styles that I'm showing you today, we decided, you know, there's not enough jewelry that's sort of dude-ish for guys. So we're going to work with the trend of stackable bracelets today, and we're going to be making thinner, endless cuffs that are really good for anybody. But we are always looking for stuff for guys, right? That was one of the things we hear a lot besides requests to learn how to use the endless loom. So let's do this today. <laughs> okay, Kathy, it's our secret. 
So I have the loom set up and I'm going to start, you want to start for a general size bracelet with about two and a half yards of Eslon or Nymo. You can use heavier cords, but I don't recommend it. Um, you need something that has flexibility for when you're weaving stretches. So the first thing I did was I'm going to pick size six beads and we're just going to work on something really simple. This is two warp bands with two beads in between them. So that's what I'm going to show you how to make today, starting, weaving, and finishing. So I have just a size 10 needle, which is a nice hard um, beading needle. And I'm going to work with size six three cut beads just to give them a little texture and interest. So nice and easy to see the holes, nice and substantial to play into the a dude style. So I've threaded a shorter piece of thread for the demo on my needle and I'm going to, I'm right handed so I kind of start on my left and work from the right and my beads are on my left. So your beads go on your non-dominant hand side and, and you'll see why I think you lefties as we start to work. The first thing you do is take the end of your thread and tie it on to the leftmost warp band, the endless band. And all I'm going to do is tie gently a square knot right on there and you can leave the tail. Now I want to talk to you also about your tension here. First of all, one of the reasons why I suggested Eslon and Nymo is because Fireline or Wildfire, those stronger durable threads, will cut the elastic in the bands. You don't want to use those. So, the method for weaving is the same on almost every loom. You have your warp threads and your working thread, let's call it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. I'm going to bring my needle underneath both of the bands. My needle and thread. Well, first, you're going to pick up your beads there. From the left, you're going to bring your needle underneath your bands and you're going to bring the beads up between the two warp bands. Do you see how I'm holding it here? Now I'm pushing up from underneath because I'm going to sew back through the beads and keep my needle and thread over the warp bands. So I go through my beads now I want you to notice, first of all, that when you're working with a long piece of thread, the tendency to get caught on the little buttons on the end of your loom is quite frequent, so you just want to be aware of that. And I'm still holding the beads in place with my non-dominant hand, and I'm using my thumb to keep my thread coming straight out of my beads, no matter which way I pull. Now I don't want to pull too hard. Let's see if I can get you to show to show you this. You don't want to pull so hard that when you pull your thread, see how the warp band indents into the beads? Don't do that. You want to keep it nice and gentle because you aren't going to have flexibility when you do this bracelet. Now I'm going to pick up my beads, which are off off frame on the left hand side. And I'm bringing my needle underneath. Now look at how I'm holding my beads here close to the warp because I don't want them to come all the way, whoops, all the way over. I want to just help myself out by keeping them convenient. Finger underneath, sew back through, hold my thread so it comes straight through and you can see the thread on the right hand side pulling gently against the endless band. Now I'm going to pick up two more beads from the left, come underneath, hold my beads in place. 
and pull gently and slowly. Take your time here so you don't get your thread caught because you really are working with a long piece of thread. It's really it's it's challenging to add thread to this, especially on a stretchy band on the endless bands. So you want to work with longer than you would need. You can always cut it off. So here I am underneath, pushing the beads up between the two bands, sewing back through the beads, making sure my needle and thread are over the warp, using my thumb to guide the thread straight from the bead, and then gently keep pulling the beads close together, but gently and easily. As you progress, you're gonna be able to just turn your beads like this. Does everybody have that so far? String your beads underneath, pop up, sew through. Let's put this one aside and bring in the one where I've woven almost all the way around and I'll show you how to end it. Okay, I just have a little rubber band on here to hold my needle while I was doing that so all right all the extra thread here we go I have come where are we all the way around and this is upside down okay so my needle and thread are coming out from here I started, worked all the way around, and you can see this is turning. Here's my starting tail thread. Now I've left myself about an inch. Let's see, there we go. There's about an inch here. When you get to this far, take your piece off the loom and let it rest. By doing that, you allow the bands to sort of shrink back to their natural size. I'll let it rest a, an hour or two, I would say. Now you're gonna see probably that the beads are gonna start to crinkle up a little bit, even if you've had easy tension. Don't worry about it. You can stretch it out, manipulate the beads with your fingers, roll them gently. This is why we don't pull our thread real tight. Roll them gently around and stretch the bracelet out until you feel that it's laying properly and you can work from the starting tail around just in the same direction and the same sequence that you added each row so you can give the rows of beads a little bit of room to slide around the endless bands and what may happen and what will happen is your end space will shrink up it may shrink up so much that you need to take rows off. And that's exactly what is fine to happen. And you just carefully take your needle off your thread and pull the working thread to remove the rows. Okay, so I can see that I probably have room for a couple more rows. I'm gonna put my work back on my loom and I'm gonna add my final rows. Sneaking up on the, let's bring that back so you can see it. One thing I find about the S line, it's very slippery and I have tried to sew rows of beads with no thread in my needle. So just pay attention to these little things. I'm gonna string the two beads, come underneath, like I showed you before. I'm gonna slide that around a little so I get my beads in my working space. All right, looks like I have a couple rows left here. I'm caught. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna bring your beads up, hold it in place, sew back through, use your thumb to hold the thread so that it comes nice and straight. Pick up your next row, or however many rows you need to fill in this space. And what I'm working for now is to bring my rows of beads back up 
to where I'm just about to meet the first row that I put on. And what happens then is that you're going to use that first row as your last row. And you're going to sew in the same method through from underneath and back over to connect the rows of your bracelet. So here I'm adding next to last row. Actually, I think I might make this my last row. Sewing back through, holding it straight. Okay. Let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see how I end this. Did you see how I'm just rolling those beads together? Now I have my last row and my first row right next to each other. And I'm going to go underneath. Now here's, it's not really the tricky part, but I'm going to turn my, loom, my work a little bit so that I can go through that first row of beads underneath the warp bands. And I'm going to pull my thread gently through. And then I'm going to hold my finger under that first row, the one where the tail thread is, and I'm going to go back through that. And this connects my first row and my last row. Now my working thread is meeting my tail. And I can knot them very gently. You don't want a lot of tension. Very gently together in a square knot. And at this point, I can trim my working thread so I don't have to worry about all of that. And uh, we are going to, can you guess, weave the ends in. So it doesn't matter which one you take. I have my needle. Here's my needle threading tip. Pull the thread down as far as you can till it looks like a poppy seed between your thumb and forefinger. Bring the eye of your needle down to the thread and it goes through. Now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat going through the row, but first we're going to make half hitches along the warp endless bands to keep the thread inside so it doesn't slide out. I'm going to zoom this in here. So I'm going to come up from underneath so that I have a loop of thread that's going to form around that outside band and bring my needle through. You can, if you want to, go back with a tube of hypo cement, which has that really, really skinny, skinny, skinny tip and dot glue on these half hitches. Now I'm just going to go up through the next row of beads. Don't lose your thread. And I'm going to make a half hitch on the other side. And I'm going to sew back through that row that I just came out of. And you can repeat this for several beads. And then, of course, you would string your working thread on a needle and do the same thing. Then when you take your bracelet off, you give it a couple little gentle tugs, and there you go. The thing that I mentioned before is that we're following the trend with these stackable bracelets for guys and dolls. Pretty cool. What do you think? I hope this helped to explain how to use the Endless Loom with the Endless Bands by Deb Moffat Hall from The Beadsmith. I'm Leslie Rogowski saying happy beading. Remember you can get your Endless Loom, Endless Bands, Eslon, and all your favorite beads from your favorite bead seller. We love beads. See ya!